there'll be many people pointing to the fact that satisfaction really collapsed after March 2020. I suppose a lot of this has got to be to do with COVID. Absolutely. We practically shut our doors to many uh, people with many other problems. And the NHS became focused on uh, very much one single disease. And that built up problems in the system, which was already struggling. And we now have uh, an absolute legacy of that with um, excess mortality and people with huge uh, problems waiting for care and over 7 million on the waiting list. But the problems uh, were already, we've had problems every single winter. Um, I've been doing this job for a long time and we're always writing about backlogs of ambulances and clogged up uh, systems. And interestingly, the survey uh, picked out people believe that uh, increasing staff numbers and increasing money will will fix this. But we've been doing that for a long time. And we the NHS has become famous for throwing pots of money and doing short term quick fix solutions. And it doesn't seem to be working. Um, the Dutch uh, spend about the same amount of money as we do on their health system, and they don't have these kind of weights. So I think that politicians need to be brave enough to look at sort of real reforms and to get to the roots of some of these problems which have become entrenched. Lucy, the report's author, Dan Wellings, who's a senior fellow at the King's Fund, he said that a lot of patients feel like their relationship with the NHS is a toxic one. Do you think he means by that that essentially people are reliant on the NHS, but they're not getting what they deserve in return, a bit like a relationship gone wrong? Absolutely. And we can see that people are waiting years for care. They're waiting in pain. They're struggling. There are some parts of the country where there are, the waiting lists have just been closed because they can no longer put more people on them. So it, it doesn't work for the vast majority of people. And I think we do need to think about radical things like opening up the system for seven days. Premier Inn does it, Google does it. The armed forces wouldn't work on a you know sort of four day operation. And I was reading something this morning uh, which showed that there was an activity, we lose about 30 to 50% of, of our activity in hospitals because we're not running the system full time and we're not running over seven days. I know doctors don't necessarily want to see that, but we need to modernize and we need to, it has the same system as it had in 1948. And we have a very different population with very different treatments. And yet, Lucy, nine years ago, David Cameron, the then Prime Minister, the now Foreign Secretary, promised a seven-day NHS. It was one of the policy planks of the 2015 Conservative Manifesto, a manifesto that won a majority in the House of Commons. Did that just never materialise? And frankly, are there things that we can learn from other countries that perhaps uh, are finding this period less challenging than the NHS is? Absolutely. And, and we have uh, countries like Israel and uh, Australia. They have systems where you have um, health bodies that look after their own regions. So we've, we've got this sort of central government, we've got lots of pangos, lots of money wasted. Um, the doctors fought off that attempt to bring in seven day working and perhaps they would do again, but someone has to be brave enough to actually look at that and bring it in. And the other thing that is uh, really important, I think, um, the Department of Health and Social Care, as, it, as it's called, is a bit of a misnomer the social care part is never given the same attention or funding that the hospitals are. And social care is something which councils have to look after. They are cash strapped. People yeah. are in, you know, struggling in their homes. They clog up the GP surgeries. They clog up the hospitals. And if people aren't prepared to look after their elderly loved ones, as many people aren't for whatever reasons, we really have to think about how to fund that properly.